Welcome, viewers, to Let's Play Ogre Battle by Mr. Joseph here on YouTube. Thanks for tuning in. This is going to be an exciting walkthrough of the game, uh, as played by yours truly. This game was originally released, well, probably in Japan, as most uh, games for the console were. This is an SNES game, however. It uh, is roughly a medieval fantasy genre. And basically, it is a RPG-style strategy game. In other words, it combines elements of the RPG style with the strategy game style. The game consists of... Many of you probably know this, so I apologize for repeating the, the obvious, but... Basically, the game consists of you uh, leading a small army in a rebellion against the empire that is established in the game. I'm going to go ahead and let this... Uh, run just a little ways here and uh, let you see the uh, backstory. Um, I'm not going to read it, and if you don't want to listen to the backstory or watch the video, then you can go ahead and skip right to the next video, which is right when I start the gameplay. So um, maybe I'll include a little note or something that allows you to do that easily. But if not, go ahead and enjoy this video. This lays out the backstory, which is important. You'll also notice that there are tarot cards going through the back of the screen there. And, um, uh, here's the story. Episode 5, March of the Black Queen. So, as I'm sure you're reading this, um, I try not to be too distracting here, but basically I just want to tell you that uh, one of the um, things you'll notice in this game is the heavy use of tarot, as I was saying, and basically what that means is that um, you're going to be having zodiac-related items and, and objects appear, and you're also going to be using zodiac cards um, in battle, and they have certain effects. Um, and we'll explain that as the time comes, but it is a vital element of this game. So as you can see, this, uh, this is the uh, story here, uh, leading up to Rebellion. And, uh, we're gonna go ahead and let it run again, because we're gonna kind of expose you to some of the units. This game is all about creating military units to go up against the opposing units. And... Units are comprised of different characters, and each unit can have a maximum of five character slots, which may be taken up by five regular sized characters, or um, one regular sized character and up to two large sized characters, such as dragons. So, you gotta, you know, figure out how you're gonna compose your, compile your units. You've got to um, think about that strategically, and in order to help you get used to that, you can go ahead and watch the following uh, video that's going to come up here, which goes through some of the units. And I'll be commentating during this video in my last video. Um, so, here we go with the video. While it looks, uh, while it gets ready to play here, one last thing to keep in mind is that this game is done in levels or stages, which are regions. So, usually you'll have a chance to save between those stages. But, and manipulate your units. So, here are the characters. This is a fighter. The backbone of any army is a front row fighting unit. It usually upgrades to a knight uh, fighting unit, a melee unit, which takes blows very well. Wildman is the less less uh, well aligned version of the knight, in other words, and then the evil one is upgrade from the wildman, an evil character to be sure. The wildman and evil one both have negative alignments, the samurai and knight have positive alignments. A samurai is a advanced sword fighter and also has some interesting uh, magical abilities. Ninjas also have magical and sword abilities, but they're less good in relying agility. Amazons are the primary female character. They can upgrade to one of three classes, including the Valkyrie, which uses lightning magic. And we'll come back
back to that. Now the Beast Man is a fighter upgrade. It basically is a uh, good at agility and hitting things. Doll Mage is a fighter upgrade. It's a type of mage who does acid, which is a hit-all ability. The Wizard is the bread and butter of any army, and it uses a single attack that attacks a specific unit or a, a character. The Witch is a one of the three female upgrades, the less good aligned one. The better aligned one is the Cleric. The Witch stuns its enemies, the Cleric heals its allies. Mermaids are wild uh, creatures that are found in the oceans, and they cast a blizzard. And uh, golems are creatures, they can take up two character slots, just as giants do. They both do melee damage, and they're both very tough, uh, but not so good at magic. The Hellhound is a um, beast as well, primarily melee, but it does fire damage as well from the back. Octopus swims, uh, you know, it's a water unit, primarily melee, but it can learn some things as the game goes on. Dragon is a primarily melee unit as well, although it does fire from the back, it's a beast. Skeletons are undead melee fighters, whereas ghosts are undead magic casters, and they do have a melee attack as well, but it's not very strong. Hawkman are basically flying hand-to-hand um, -hand fighters using reliant on agility. Angels are, are flying magic users of high alignment. Imps are flying magic users of low alignment, kind of the opposite of angels, really. Fairies are, you know, flying buff, you know, buff enhancers or enchanters. Griffins are beasts that fly and give your units the ability to fly. They cast magic from the back or they attack melee from the front. Worms are also flying beasts. They do not have any ability other than to physically attack. And the hero of the legend is your character who may or may not be a male or a female and has the ability to attack and cast magic. Okay, that does it for units. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the loading screen. We're gonna go ahead and select new game. Yay! I'm trying to remember my ZNES controls over here. Warren, I am I am a great seer who can understand the destiny of the stars have placed upon you. And I use the power of the tarot to decide whether or not you are fit to become our leader. But first please tell me your name. So I'm gonna call myself Let's go with Joseph. You can call him whatever you want. Mine's gonna be male because I'm male. And I, I like having stories where I'm kind of, you know, taking taking the uh, role on directly. And I'm gonna be male, as I said. Now, the answer to these questions affects your character and your unit. Hero Fence is a good card for this. Qualities and a leader that you look for. You know, it's self sense of justice. And Empress, number three. King wishing to rule the world, what personality trait do you feel you most lack? So it's kind of the opposite of the last question. Well, that's a tough one. I'm gonna go with three. I love this music, by the way. The night before battle, you drink a parting toast with your comrades. How full is your glass? Fill to the brim, I might get drunk. Barely any, I might be mm, it's the middle of the road. I like the barely any. It's symbolic, it's not meant to get drunk. I'm taking your job very seriously. Knights of seen disgraceful behavior, what do you warn them most about? I'm gonna say be kind to all you meet. Alright, let's see here. Chariot. How to rule people with different ideas. Military, religion, or leadership. I don't like religion. I'm an atheist. Military, eh. Let's go with leadership and charisma. I feel like I'm gonna get a charisma boost by checking that. The, the answer to these questions affect your character stats as well as the character unit that you get and his alignment. So, what do you wish for before battle? Let's see here. Go with bravery. And finally, you get to choose a card which also affects those things that I just mentioned. So I like to go kind of random. I'll go with this one. What do you got for me, old man? Please be Emperor. Emperor! Lovers is good. Lovers is good. Now let's see what kind of unit we got here. Click edit units. Okay, that's not the one I wanted. Although Thunder is a decent attack. I got the slightly below average alignment character. You get basically four options here. You get 
one that's low alignment, middle low, middle high, and high alignment. I got the middle low alignment for some reason. I didn't think my answers were that bad, but whatever. He got thunder. And, ooh, excuse me. So thunder is kind of a, it's a pretty good spell. You get four options for spells. You get ice cloud, which is the good spell. The middle high alignment spell is Ianuki, which I hate. Thunder is a good spell, and then Phantom is a good spell as well. Phantom would be the low level one, where I'd have a wizard accompany me. The uh, mid level one with the Ianuki is a Valkyrie, and the high level one is going to be a Thunder. So, anyway, I'll just go ahead and go with this. This is fine. This is, you know, if you have a really strong preference, go ahead and pick your preference. Um, okay, so I saved it, and we'll start the Castle of Horn on the next episode of Let's Play Ogre Battle! And just remember, as I say at the end of all of my videos, Professor Snuggles is looking out for you. Thanks.